In this video, we are going to be talking about the 1954 classic Italian film, La Strada, directed by Federico Fellini and stars Anthony Quinn and Giulietta Messina. Is it a movie or is it a film or is it both? And are, is there even a difference between the two? Let's find out right now. We are Movie Versus Film, a movie education and film review channel. My name is Robert Bellissimo. I am the film guy. I'm Steve Chambers. I'm the movie guy. For those of you who perhaps haven't seen La Strada, I will just briefly give the plot according to IMDb. A carefree girl is sold to a traveling entertainer, consequently enduring physical and emotional pain along the way. I would say that's about half of what goes on. Let me get my scorecard up. Pop! Woo! There it is. We've got complexity, strong acting, emotional, ambiguous, and life questions. So, am I going to give it the complexity coffee cup? Absolutely. This relationship between Anthony Quinn and Julieta Messina is very, it's odd. Um, you don't quite know how they feel about each other. Their, their feelings seem to be conflicting. Uh, he's basically here to take her on the road with him. He's a traveling artist who goes to circuses and, and, and shows all over, the, all over Italy. And uh, her sister had worked with him as a sidekick and died. So as he comes to tell the family he needs a new sidekick, so there she goes off with him. And you don't, you know, he's a, it's interesting because he's abusive towards her. He's controlling of her. He's cold. He's distant. Uh, yet she falls in, falls in love with him. Yet she's jealous of the fact that he's, you know, sleeping around with other women. It doesn't make sense just talking about it. But when you look at who this woman is, she's basically lived uh, in seclusion. And basically, she's still, even though she's an adult, she's still very childlike. I mean, even the performance is a very Chaplin-esque uh, performance. And so this is her only model of a guy. And at the same time, he's, he's teaching her something. He's giving her a job. She's feeling useful. She's meeting people. She's traveling. So these are all these new experiences. So you can understand how this is the only man that she's really knows and that there's love as a, as a result of those things. But I think she, she understands him uh, somehow. You don't really quite know how, but she's uh, tender towards him. She's compassionate towards him. But at the same time, he hurts her. Uh, he leaves her at the side of the road to go sleep with some woman. And, and even for him, I mean, is, you know, he's, you know, this woman clearly is, you know, she even talks about wanting to get married to him and he doesn't say no. Uh, why, why is, does he not have the ability to love? Uh, I mean, he's this brutal guy, this killer, this beater, uh, this thief um, who does these odd, uh, but at the same time, he's an entertainer. Whereas in life, he's not entertaining anybody. He's just a brutal guy who can't love and doesn't know how to receive love. So it's a really odd, complex relationship between, between these two, which is quite fascinating. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna give it the complexity coffee cup. Is it emotional? Absolutely, it's an emotional film. There are some scenes that are just heartbreaking, especially towards the end where Zampano is left totally alone when he finds out uh, after he's abandoned the, the sidekick that uh, she's died and he hasn't seen her in years, and he, you know, he starts to drink, he starts to get into fights. This is when you finally find out how he really feels about her. Throughout the film, you're not quite sure, and he's alone right beside the sea on a beach, breaking down. Uh, and what's quite fascinating is how Fellini can make you feel for a guy that bad, uh, you, you know, to really show his humanity. You almost feel guilty to feel for him, but at the same time, you, you, you empathize even with the, um, the, the worst kinds of characters, uh, which you later saw in American films, uh, in British films. Uh, but it, it really started, I think, in Italy with uh, this is, you know, just post neorealism traditions. Everybody in this, in this film is amazing. I mean, Julieta Messina and Anthony Quinn uh, say so much with just their expressions. I mean, particularly Messina is this 
you know, childlike woman. Like there's one scene where she's playing with the, with this sick boy and just the look on her eyes, the innocence, uh, also the heartbreak, the treatment of Zampano, uh, the, the feeling of loss, the feeling of not knowing what to do with herself of no purpose. Um, it's, 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 it's just, just an extraordinary what she can do by saying so little. And of course with Quinn as well, who's just a brutal guy who is not articulate, uh, but he says so much just with his looks, with his expressions, with his distance, with his coldness, which is not always easy to play. Uh, and then of course you have the, the actor who played the fool, who I love, who I never really even knew was American. Uh, he's fantastic. He's Richard just Basehart, this, yeah. Richard Basehart, um, you know, he just can't help but uh, bust Sampano's balls. You know, Every, like he just cannot help it. <laughs> Even though he knows this guy could potentially kill him. Uh, it's almost as if he has a death wish. I mean, he talks about the fact that he's going to die young. Well, eventually I'll break my, my neck or something. You know, he does all these like life or death tricks, you know, walking on a, on a, on a tightrope and stuff like that. It's, it's fun to watch him just bust this guy's balls, to make jokes of him, to, to stop his, uh, his, his uh, performances, uh, to say, hey, you got, a, you got a phone call just to make a buffoon of him. Uh, even though this, he, I, he knows that he's going too far and he even admits he cannot help himself. It reminds me of the scene in, in Goodfellas where uh, Spider just can't help but tell Joe Pesci's character to go fuck himself. You know, it's like he just says one word too many. And, you know, ultimately uh, he gets killed. And that's another scene. Just talk about emotional, uh, which is just devastating to see this guy that I love uh, and also really helped uh, Messina's character as well in terms of this, this, these questions of what is purpose. Uh, she thinks that she doesn't have a purpose. She thinks that she's useless. And he says, everybody has a purpose. Even this pedal has a purpose. And she takes that as, well, maybe my purpose is to be with Zampano. And you can see by the look on his face that he's like, that's not quite what I was going for. Uh, but perhaps it is. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but she, she finds something. There's some growth there as a result of that relationship uh, with the fool. But that's an incredible performance. So, yes, it absolutely gets those three complexity emotional and strong acting absolutely now onto the ambiguous coffee cup i'm going to give it half uh, i would say that everything is pretty clear in terms of uh, everyone's actually quite upfront uh with how, how how they feel or why they do what they do uh except zampano and i'm always fascinated by people who don't know how to love who want love i mean here's a guy who basically you know why does he need this sidekick uh, really, I mean, yes, she she has the drums when he's doing his uh, his uh, you know to to that weird act of his to take the chain off his chest uh, just by flexing his muscles. <laughs> and you know, does he really need that? Is it really essential for him to have a, an assistant? At the same time, they're in this like wagon on the on the back of a motorbike, and he insists on sleeping on the same bed next to each other. It's not like he didn't have he's not having sex with her or anything, but just to have someone beside him uh, to have some kind of companion. It's like he has to make it a contract. Uh, so I was wondering why does he not why does he not have the ability to love? Why does he not have the ability to receive and give it? And I think a lot of this goes back to World War II and just reeling from that war and the, the, the cynicism. Um, you know, and I, and I know that behavior as well. And, it, and, and I've seen it uh, in, in others and perhaps even in myself at times. And I'm always fascinated as to where that comes from because it's something that we all need. Yet, why can't we always embrace it or give it? Do we not trust it? Are we afraid of it? I don't know. But that's something to definitely ponder. So I'm going to give it a half because I really think everything else was pretty clear cut. Life questions. I don't think it really asks any questions. I think it is very much a this is what it is uh, kind of movie um, where you're just brought into this world. You're, you are brought into this relationship. You are brought into this part of life. Uh, of the circus performers and the gypsies and the the travelers and the, the you know just those that kind of that kind of reality and a complex human relationship between two people who are trying to get by and find find purpose and find love and find meaning and I think that's pretty pretty clear I don't think there's anything that is uh, overall uh, questions that are universal. Uh, so, of course, you saw this in a lot of later films uh, outside of Italy, just bringing you right in just the, 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 the reality of the situation. So I'm not going to give it a, anything to do with life questions, but I do think it gives an answer, an interesting answer that I touched on earlier about purpose. 
does everyone have a purpose? And I think as the fool says, yes, everyone does have a purpose. Um, whatever that might be, maybe you won't necessarily like that purpose, but finding that purpose, finding that meaning, finding that value is an essential part of life to put you back on the right road, uh, whatever your purpose is. Uh, so that there's some soul searching. And I think it gives you that answer quite clearly. So I'm going to say no, which overall it is a three and a half out of five on a film scorecard. I love this movie. It's definitely one of Fellini's best on to the movie guy to see how it holds up as a movie. It's got five points. We're going to bring them up now. You ready? Yeah, I am. Okay. <laughs> there there you it go. is. There you go. Oh dear. I got to dust that. Um, okay. So my five points, I'll explain each of them a little more in depth as we go through them in regards to this film. But the five points are number one, we got coolness. We got right after that feel after that clear story. I don't think you can get more clear than that. Entertaining. And then finally, our wow factor. How, how, how do we uh, end up feeling by the end credits? Okay, so let's kick it off. Cool, cool. So what I'm saying here is, uh, did it move well? Did it look good? Did it sound good in regards to music and sound design? The whole, you know, the movie going experience, I'm going to say, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, it moves at a good clip. I think that the camera per scene also almost sort of mimics our characters. There's a certain playfulness to the, to, to the overall vibe of this film. And while, and we'll get into this, or it's certainly, and Robert's uh, touched on some dark elements, it, it's all sort of filtered through um, Gelsamina's eyes, uh, the sort of innocent, you know, childlike clown. You know, the playfulness works. It keeps it moving along. Um, the music's fun and it's super quirky. So coolness, does it get that? Damn right it does. Moving on. Feel, did it emotionally grab me? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. It appealed more to my, um, my emotions than it did my mind. Moving on, we got clear story, clear story. Yes and no. The part of me that says no, it wasn't a clear story is because of the characters. Now, characters, you say are a separate thing but to me the movie guy they, they are part of the clear story if the characters are well defined and are 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 motivated by you know the plot then they are part of the story uh but this is such a character driven we're only really focused on two okay maybe three with the uh, base heart character but you're focused on two people so they become the plot Listen, if it's really a movie I don't find myself wondering well why is he doing that like I I know you've told me or the plot has told me, the music's told, something told, yeah, I, I'm not sitting there going like, well, what's this choice about? But here I find that I am kind of doing that. I, I, I am kind of trying to figure out what their backgrounds are. I mean, there is a surreal element to like, why is she so weird? Like she's adorable and she's sort of like Stan Laurel, you know, from Laurel and Hardy. That's who she reminds me of. <laughs> but like, it's so surreal, but then you've got such a real, kind of heavy emotional things. What world are we going into here? Like, where is she from? Him, I kind of get. I, I can't necessarily put it into words. Even if I could, I won't go into that now. But you kind of get him. Doesn't mean I agree with him, but I get him. Her, she's so bizarre and she's infectious and she's great and the performance is great. I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying her motive, her actions seem so unmotivated at times that it does take me out of the kind of quote unquote clear cut story and end up wondering what is going on here. So then is it a clear cut story? So I got to go half there. Entertaining, captivating, yes and no. It moves well uh, uh, and it's fun and 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 I, I'm, I'm interested for the most part. But then there's like these unmotivated surreal moments like that little the traveling band that just walks by and Gelsamina gets excited and follows them and i'm just like it takes for me it takes me out of the film and it makes me like study it a little more like what are we doing here like everything seems like okay got it got it got it and then the surreal stuff happens and and again this is just me judging it as a movie not I, I can appreciate that with my film hat. And so I also find in that, trying to come back from that, so I'm back there studying like some surreal thing, to bring me back, it then feels like the film is asking, asking the audience to take in a deeper feeling rather than just providing that deeper feeling. 
Is that all entertaining? No. Is it all captivating? Kinda. So I gotta go yes and no. Yes and no. I was on yes, but if I'm really honest, it's only a half a yes. Um, and then my final point, wow factor, yes and no. Okay, so is it, as you said, it's, it's heartbreaking at the end. And it is. But again, I feel like you're telling me it's heartbreaking because it's heartbreaking for this bastard of a character who so far hasn't really had any redeeming qualities that it's heartbreaking for him. You're asking me to feel heartbroken rather than making me actually heartbroken. Like when E.T. goes home, like you're heartbroken. Here, I'm a little like, okay, I get it. I get what you're telling me, but I don't know that I feel heartbroken. So I got to give it a 50-50 on that as well. So all said and done, we got, let's see, one and a half, two, I think three and a half. I think I give it three and a half popcorns. A three and a half from you and I got a three and a half from me, which is a seven. So it's just short. So it's of, more uh, a film than a movie. Yeah. So there you go. We It gets a seven out of 10, which makes it a full film, which makes me hesitant because, you, you know, uh, Fellini is such someone who actually said he, is, he wanted his films to be entertaining. Uh, and a lot of them are. It kind of makes sense that it doesn't fall uh, in, in, in totally in both worlds because it's sort of, um, you know, three quarters of a film and then maybe almost 50% of a movie. <laughs> so it's hard to, yeah, to there's not, there's not a half and a half balance. And I think that's what I, what's great about it. What I, what I love about it. That makes um, sense. There, you know, it's interesting that um, something that, you know, we've been touching on ambiguity and how, you know, uh, movies uh, purely, you know, give the answers. Um, and one thing that I've, uh, I've been meaning to point out is that uh, even though, cause you know, whether or not we're aware of it or not, even when we are responding emotionally to a movie, our head is always somewhat involved, even oh, if it's course, just coming at us. Uh, and when it's sort of um, left open to interpret, like the motivations that we're talking about in this movie, you, you also, I think, then have to be like, oh, they didn't tell me. Okay. And then just, and then just go back to the interactions. Uh, because I think yeah. if you're, you know, because we want to know everything and we hate to not know. And I think that's why people get frustrated with more, uh, film films because they're like, well, what the, f they, they hate not knowing it, it. It sort of makes them feel insecure. And I know myself, I, I, I can get like that as well. Uh, and I think often you have to just let go of that and, and watch and just watch it and then think about it later. Uh, so it's, it's a different way of watching, watching movies. It's interesting that you thought that she was more, of uh, an ambiguous character as opposed to Anthony uh, Zampano. Uh, for me, I thought because if, you know, when you see her off the top in this like, like living, like where like no one is around, like no one, uh, we're in, in poverty. And, uh, and I can understand why she was so, so childlike. Uh, but I mean, it, it's, it's so childlike to the point where she gets so much fun out of, like you said, just watching some musicians walk by, like it's like she's been she's been nowhere. Like it's it's yeah. it's like, can you be that secluded? It's it like that, like I know I know people who have who have lived in in, in seclusion, uh, but I, I've never quite seen seen that. I'm not I'm not criticizing the movie. I find it very interesting and unique. Uh, but yeah, it does make you it does make you wonder ab about her. Uh, Maybe, maybe her fate is to be the clown. She just enjoys the uh, things that kids like and, and then to then entertain kids, which you see when she's with children. Yeah, and I um, think an argument can be made too for like those surreal moments I say that kind of take me out of the film, kind of do blend into, for me, because I also say like, well, she's sort of ambiguous. I don't get her. I mean, you're not supposed to get her. You're, people that paid money to go watch this movie aren't living where this character lived. Like the she's, you know, we're obviously right. different. You can't fully get her. But anyway, as an audience member, I get like the, the 
I don't know if it's a trope, but the type she's playing, okay, she's the, she's the sweet innocent to his brute. I yeah. understand that. And so what kind of works in its favor too can be its surreal aspects because you could argue that you're watching this film like as though this film were made by her. Um, it is more from her viewpoint than it is Zampano's. So maybe it's 50-50. But you can excuse uh, uh, some of the, you know, crazier, cuter elements, like the little traveling band, because that's how she sees it. And if you told the exact yeah. moment through Zampano, I don't even, like, I, it's hard to say. Like, stuff like that can irk me in a film. Like, oh, oh yeah, man, this is like, you know, f heavy and real or whatever. And then like something charming and like out of a kid's movie happens. Like, what? Yeah. And, uh, but you know. Like well, I, I guess say, she had never seen, I guess she had never seen anything like this. I mean, she had. Uh, have you? I, I'm all, sorry? Have you? Like, I just wonder, like, it's just so crazy that on a quiet road, a band just happily walks <laughs> by. Yeah. Maybe that happens. I don't know. Well, I, I guess because they were, you know, they were always going to like carnivals and street shows. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. you got to yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. seeing similar things going along the way nearby. Your point on Anthony Quinn in terms of you, you found it harder to feel for for him. Uh, and and I, I agree. And I think he makes it quite hard. I don't you know, like your, your example with E.T. There's when E.T. is heartbroken and has to leave. There's no reason to not he's totally engrossed in that in that moment of loss between the boy and the alien in this case this guy loses everything and he's self-destructive uh and uh, a lot of the, this is purely his fault but it, he that i guess that's the point of just making him so bad that you even on some level some level you feel for him on and it that's what's quite uh remarkable uh, about this brutal character I know I'm supposed to feel for him. I don't feel for him. Me, me. I'm not saying like it's the filmmaker messed up. Um, but I do feel for Gelsamina. Yeah, for sure. And so when for she's sure. taken off and she dies, I feel bad that she died. I don't feel bad that this guy's left by himself. I yeah. see what you're saying. I see. I, yeah. I, I, I feel more, much more so for her. I mean, you, you don't yes. even really know you know, when he's talking to that woman, you know, he hears her singing the same song. And then, you know, he finds out that, that she had died. And then, you know, she said, well, she seemed like she was crazy. Uh, I mean, I always like, well, what, what happened to her? She went on to perform, but what else happened? Um, and, you know, I also find it interesting that when he leaves there, they're sleeping. Um, he, he really, in his view, I can understand why he felt that he had no choice because she kept saying, the fool's been hurt and he's probably thinking she's going to tell the cops or it's just good. This is going to get to him. So I'm, I'm going to have to bolt, which is clear. I don't think anyone is going to question that. Uh, and I like that nothing is said. It's just, it's so well done just with the visuals of, mm -hmm. you know, his eyes, his expression, and then taking the wagon and that POV shot of the wagon, basically moving away from her. Uh, I, I actually do find, I do feel for him, but I feel guilty to say that. I don't like, not a, a lot, but, um, I always like people who are that, you know, ignorant and brutal, uh, they are human at the same time. And you, you, I, I think we often, even now in this world that's so divided, we often, um, don't feel for, for people that we maybe even disagree with and, or they have views that are really ignorant or hateful. But it's, you know, if you don't look at why that might be, the ignorance of why that might be, you don't really learn anything about them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I both learn and feel, but yes, definitely less so in terms of Anthony Quinn's character. And it is on the Criterion channel. Uh, you can see there with uh, also some really great special features. You know, Scorsese loves this movie and he, and he uh, has a 15 minute uh, interview uh, talking about it. Uh, as well as an hour documentary, not on this, but of Fellini on the set of La Dolce Vita, uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, on the La Strada DVD, which is, or Blu-ray Criterion, which is really, really good. And it's also on Canopy as well. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, you can oh. see it on Canopy uh, for free as well. So it's very accessible. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. But we sum this up as almost a movie and a film in terms of balance, but more so on a film than a movie.
Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Again, if this is your first time here or if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking on the movie versus film logo that you will see floating above my head here to your top left in just a second. And then click the bell in order to get a notification every time we release a new video or go live. Thank you again. See you next time.